Delicious. Hi, I'm Tom Spellman with Dave Wilson Nursery. This morning we're out uh, looking at cherry trees. We're in the Central Valley of California at the Terry Family Cherry Orchard. This is actually just right outside of our uh, nursery. So uh, the Terry's have been growing cherries here on this property for many, many years. The tree behind me is a 14-year-old tree on Mahela rootstock. And uh, you can see the tree has been kept back in size considerably. So even though this is a commercial operation, the size of the trees for commercial growers has come back considerably. This tree could easily be 25 or 30 feet if it was unpruned now, but this one's kept well below 10. Commercial growers are really starting to take tree size and spacing into consideration. They want maximum yield per acre, so intense planning on close spacings. These trees are actually 10 feet apart in the row with a 16-foot roadway for equipment use only, and the trees are kept very small and very manageable. Yield per acre on these trees is actually really good. The close spacing allows for um, easy management of the trees. It allows for a much larger than normal fruit size. So as a, any commercial grower would know, the, the bigger the fruit, the better the quality, the more price you're gonna get for your fruit on the wholesale market. So this variety, Lappins, is actually a um, self-fruitful variety. It's very close to a Bing type cherry. It ripens along with Bing. And oftentimes you would probably find this fruit incorporated into Bing for sale in the markets. Here's a whole new concept in cherry growing. This is actually a procedure that is a bridge graft technique incorporating a rootstock like Citation that is resistant to heavy soils, uh, incorporating an inner stem that is compatible with the Citation and also the Prunus avium, the sweet cherry. So now we can grow cherries on soils that we weren't able to use before. Uh, heavy conditions, uh, hard pan conditions, salty soil conditions by incorporating a specific type of prunus root with the Z-stem, inner stem, and the cherry cultivar on top. Here's something we've all been waiting for for four or five months. We've had a, a long cold winter. The last of the tree fruits were uh, November, December for the real late varieties, apples and pears and some late peach and plum varieties. We all anticipate the start of cherry season. Once we start to get some good ripe cherries, everybody loves the, the first cherries of the season. The flavor's always delicious and we've been without good fruit for a number of months. We probably look just as forward to the end of cherry season because after two and a half or three months of eating cherries almost on a daily basis, it's nice to move into something else, but we're just about there. The flavor's just coming online, the size is good, the color's good, and soon everybody in the nursery is going to be eating fresh cherries. Here's a real nice block of young cherry trees. These are in just for their second year. These are experimental varieties uh, hybridized by Zagers and they're varieties that are being tested for early production. These varieties are expected to ripen up at least two to three weeks before most conventional commercial cherry varieties. Now here's the real deal for the backyard orchardist. This is a four-in-one cherry combination. These trees are on colt rootstock. They've been in the ground for 11 years. You can see how well this combination has been managed. It's really like just a little multiple cluster uh, four different varieties, one blonde and three red type cherries, successive ripening, pollinators built into the combination, so you can harvest four different seasons of cherries, one right after the other, right out of your backyard. For many, many years now, the backyard grower has been looking for the dwarf self-fertile cherry, and really the only option has been this variety right here, Craig's Crimson. It has a semi-genetic dwarfing character all its own, no matter what rootstock it's grafted onto. It's a self-fertile variety, and it's a, it's a good dark cherry, ripe uh, mid-season. Here's the newest thing in cherries, 3CR178, Zager Dwarf Rootstock. These are actually varieties that were budded last fall onto the new Zager Dwarfing root system, and these trees will mature out at two-thirds smaller than a standard cherry, so easily uh, trees that will be maintainable in the 10-foot range. Here we are out in the Dave Wilson Nursery Experimental Orchard this morning, and these are cherry trees on 3CR178 that have been in the ground now for five years. So you can see the, uh, the dwarfing character, the precocity, sets a good early crop of fruit, and we're really excited about this new rootstock. Here's what we consider to be the real attribute for Zager dwarfing rootstock on cherries. It's container adaptability. This, this tree is also five years old, just like the trees we looked at in the orchard earlier was planted at the same time. One initial cut 
to bring down the size to about knee high. All this has been established now in the meantime. Beautiful crop of fruit, very, very nice set. And uh, I think uh, considering that this has never had any other pruning, there's one cut I'd like to make right now just to bring it into balance. So how low maintenance can you get? One cut, one summer pruning on a, on a five-year-old tree, and it's in balance for the rest of the season. Here we go. So in this episode, we've looked at cherries from two points of view, a commercial grower's point of view, as well as a backyard grower's point of view. You can see the main emphasis there is size control. Everybody's keeping their trees short. So with Zager Dwarf Root, it's much, much easier to grow a backyard tree or a commercial tree that's size managed. Be sure to check with your local retail nursery for cherry varieties available on the new Zager Dwarfing Rootstock.